It's easy and it's popular to pin responsibility for child sexual abuse on internet companies and to demand that they do more to fix this problem. But if we're going to do that, we have to accept that they're going to continue down a path that will eventually see sexual speech banished from the internet. The policies that internet companies adopt are shaped by what we're demanding they do. Yes, those demands may come in the form of laws like Foster or resolutions at the United Nations or banking rules or advertising standards, but those in turn come from the responsibility that we as a society place on internet companies to protect children from sexual harm. Now, we want children to be protected from sexual harm, and platforms do legitimately want to do the right thing. But too often the only message that they're hearing about how to do that, because it's the simplest one and the only one they ever hear from government or the media, is through censorship. Now, there is a place for censorship when it comes to child pornography. Child sexual abuse images do need to be eliminated, and there are easy and reliable ways of doing that. But most internet companies, especially the large ones, are already filtering out those images, and yet they're still being told that they're not doing enough, that they need to censor more. And so they do. Entire sex-positive communities disappeared after Tumblr banned female presenting nipples and other sexual content. Facebook's sexual solicitation policies prevent you from talking about being kinky in groups that are designed for that. Instagram is now demoting content that has no sex or nudity but is merely suggestive. Reddit just banned sexual ads after already banning sexual cartoons. Discord did the same and it also deleted, this is literally true, child sexual abuse prevention forums. YouTube is demonetizing sex education videos and Google is over-censoring search results to the extent that Wikipedia pages are censored from its search index. It has gone too far. We know that censorship of sexual speech doesn't work and that it hurts artists, sex workers, LGBTQ people, especially young and kinky people, sex educators, people who need support, and ultimately it hurts children who are unable to access sex education information and support resources. And all of this is happening because the squeaky wheels are telling internet companies that they need to censor more and more and more, and the people who are being affected by that are not being heard. Prostasia Foundation wants to change that. We're holding an event next month where we're bringing these excluded voices together with child sexual abuse prevention experts and other experts, lawyers, people from the payments industry and the sex industries, and child sexual abuse survivors to talk to internet companies to say, this is how we are being affected. And here are some better ways of protecting children that won't send us into a sexual dark age. I'm going to be facilitating the event because I'm an expert in the use of what we call multi-stakeholder processes to bring diverse stakeholders together to make progress on really tough issues like how do we allow sexual speech and protect kids at the same time. It's the first time anyone has done something like this. And after this meeting, we're going to be taking it around the world. But we need your help. If you can be in San Francisco on May 23rd, we need you in that room to make this happen. If you can't, we need you to help spread the word. Now is the time to act, because with every day that goes by, more and more speech about sex is being needlessly censored, and more opportunities are passing us by to do a better and more nuanced job of protecting real children from child sexual abuse.